Tag TV and Tag Radio be seen and heard by both technology users and technology producers throughout the state of Georgia and around the world. Low cost, big benefits, powerhouse online branded video and audio has arrived. Tag TV, Tag Radio, there's a lot more to know. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com. New media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Oh, all the noise about IT infrastructure, it's enough to make you dizzy. All the changes, all the different opinions, the investment. It all sounds like Charlie Brown's reaction to his teacher explaining algebra. Wah, 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 wah. Reality is the headaches of managing and budgeting complex IT are not going away anytime soon. And the bottom line, amazing productivity of leading-edge software and hardware to the very survival, no less competitive advantage of every business will only become more crucially important with every day in the coming economic environment. Greetings, everyone. It's Thursday, December 16, 2010, and this is a special Premier Focus edition of Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. TAG's Premier members are unique. They are not only world standard high-tech or tech-enabled companies. They are also the vanguard leaders among all of TAG Association elite who are not only providing stellar services to their customers, but often offer unheralded services to our industry and our community. Up to this premier member focus, Abacus Solutions, one of the technology leading IT infrastructure solution providers in the industry today, specializing in virtualization, enterprise storage, comprehensive network solutions, backup and business continuity, and procurement of new and refurbished services, storage, and networking gear. The Tech Talk is all about world-class IT infrastructure solutions for companies of every size and shape as we speak with Abacus co-founder and CEO, Patrick Hiller. A grad of Georgia Tech, Patrick has been an executive leader for IT companies like SunData, now Solarcom, and Venture System Source. For over a decade prior to co-founding the company, Patrick worked as an account executive and a vice president for those two national VARs. The right mix of products and strategic partners, Abacus Solutions, and its over 10 years of proven performance as the Tech Talk turns its focus on one of TAG's elite premier member companies and speaks with Abacus Solutions CEO, Patrick Hiller. Patrick, welcome to Tech Talk. Thank you very much. Well, arguably, Patrick, the the headaches of managing and budgeting complex IT environments, it's never going to go away. Um, take us inside Abacus a little bit and give us uh, your consideration of the long term. How do you actually deliver solutions specifically for each individual infrastructure challenge you run into? Well, Frank, what we do is, uh, you know, we have a very strong team of technical consultants, and we actually sit down uh, with the clients, and we really try to dig in to see, you know, really what are some of the headaches and some challenges that they're facing, and where do they actually see some possible efficiencies that they can gain, and uh, we sit down um, with them. And then we actually, you know, we we have uh, many, many uh, manufacturers of whether it's software or hardware, servers, networking, uh, storage, and we put together what we believe is the best of breed solution, Uh, and then we we design it. We put together, you know, basically a draft through drawings and, and come up with what we believe is going to be the best solution for them. And then after we both agree to it, uh, then we go through the entire process to integrate all these technologies together and train and transfer knowledge uh, to the clients. And then we also will do uh, support after the sale, like uh, remote monitoring or maintenance or, or anything like that. So that's that's basically how we I can only imagine that uh, there's got to be tremendous, tremendous amount of trust established even early on. What are some of the processes that you do in the early engagement? You know, are you do what uh, we would call in our marketing or new media a situation analysis? Do you, or do they specifically identify a problem, or do you consult and go in and actually look for and, and do a best of breed kind of setup? Well, when we're first introduced, usually people have an idea mm-hmm. of what they're dealing with and, and what happens. You know, as we start to get deeper into the analysis we usually will discover things that may, they might not have seen. 
and uh, so we can you know start out with kind of what they thought was a challenge and dig a little bit deeper and use some of our expertise to you know come up with other things they might have missed that might have been a problem in the future so you know you've got to you, you mentioned trust early on and mm. and you're right that's a big deal the stuff we're dealing in is is fairly complex and we we have to go through a cycle of of kind of building that credibility uh with the client uh we do that you know just we've got a a pretty good reputation here locally so that helps us out a lot cuz we've been in business for 10 years but for people that have not heard of us we really uh, have to sit down with them and spend lots and lots of hours of really kind of going over uh, what we what they said their problem is, what we believe other problems are, and come up with the design. And we have a lot of customer references and mm-hmm. people that they can call where we've done similar uh, things before. We, we will even have uh, you know prospects go on site to our customers to see the work that we've done. So, but you're right, it is a pretty long process to build up that trust and credibility because no one's just going to hand over the keys uh, without doing some due diligence on who we are. Of course, the other side, everything is so dazzling anymore with all of the productivity gains of leading-edge softwares and hardware vendors, uh, not only today, but also I'm guessing what is coming in the future with all the change. Um, what's the biggest obstacle causing an organization to wait so long before they capitalize on finding someone like you and getting those kind of efficiencies in place? I mean, especially with the economy the way it is now and will be, obviously, in the near future. Well, I think change is hard for, for anybody mm-hmm. I mean, we're all humans, and we're used to doing things the way we've always done them. And to to come in and try to do things very different, you know, gives people uh, a little bit of uneasiness. So, so the the biggest obstacle is just really trying to sit down and get people comfortable with. Sometimes we've got to make some changes that are going to make your environment more efficient. Um, uh, capital is always going to be a, a huge uh, obstacle. You know, when you're implementing one of these type of projects, it does cost money. And while we can, you know, offer it, you know, we can finance it or we can offer it as a service, uh, you know, money and, and spending large amounts of capital or operational expense on new technologies is probably the, the biggest heartburn that people have to deal with when it comes to moving past. But if we can prove uh, that, that the investment will pay off long term, their business will be stable and the data will be uh kept more secure, then, then we, we really can start to put together a business case so people can see why they need to, to move forward with some of our, well, as our you were, service offers. As you were describing that, I was thinking to myself, if uh, obviously one of the things, again, going back to that trust factor, but also it's actually really becoming almost partners in terms of the business itself. And, you know, I'm not sure exactly the terminology, but when you look at the investment uh, and that you can act- actually calculate a return on that investment or offset cost, I know that one of the old cliches that I've heard many times used it myself is that if you can't save me money or make me money, I don't want to talk to you. So I guess at some point you've really got to prove those points out before they really will make a commitment. Uh, you absolutely do. And then take for, for one piece, um, if a system is down, you know, how much is that going to cost your business? And that's more of a soft cost, but it is real. And, and it is a real analysis that, that you know, business executives will take seriously. Sure. Because if you've ever experienced a, an outage, you know, even if you're at the airport and the, the reservation system goes down for, for 20 minutes, it makes the headline news. So, you know, w- we need to make sure that when we build our systems that, that they're very uh, resilient, they're highly available, it, it's, it can uh, be run from multiple data centers. So so for the real critical systems, there never is downtime because uh, we, we just these days and, and, and this year and, you know, in, the, in this uh decade moving forward, we just can't have systems down on, on critical applications. They have to be up all the time. And that truly is a is something you could measure on how long you'd be down and how mm-hmm. much that would cost your business. Mm. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier that there are occasions when you run into a new prospect that may not recognize the name, and yet I certainly know over the decade that you've been in business, your reputation, uh, um, it, it, certainly you are in the top three to five of those people that are leading the edge and providing these kinds of services. Uh, share with our listeners a little bit about how this whole began. How did you uh, get uh, started uh, going from either working for someone and becoming your own entrepreneur and partners and, you know, a little bit of the history of the company. How did it all begin? Sure, Frank. Uh, my business partner and I, Ken Snug, started the company about 10 years ago, and it's a pretty, uh, I guess, simple story. Um, you know, we, we viewed that the, the market really needed to have another player in it that could provide, you know, better customer service uh better thought leadership when it came to technology uh, in the infrastructure space. And so we really focused on bringing on some really talented people 
and, and really focusing on ultra customer service, kind of like uh, the Zappos uh, that we hear about in the news today. And we also wanted to do it at price points that we felt were uh, more competitive than the market was seeing. So, so, so that was one side of it. But the other side of it was, quite frankly, uh, Ken and I had worked for, for other companies and other people that we just felt that you know, maybe carried a little bit too much ego in the office or the culture hmm. was a little bit too much uh, cracking the whip. And, and you know, we, we spend most of our time in the office, so we wanted to create a fun culture that – uh, everyone actually enjoyed to come to work every day. We have to work because we got to pay our bills, but we wanted to create a culture that when you walked in the door, you know, you felt like you were part of something special. You knew that everybody had your back. As long as you were carrying your weight, uh, you had everyone here that would support you. So so we wanted to build a culture that was uh, really strong, that was really fun, with high morale, and, and a team that really liked to go out there and just really uh, blow blow away the customer's expectations. So that's really uh, that's really. The, I well, I think it shows in a lot of, of the growth and profits that you've enjoyed over the years. I mean, I, obviously, if you love what you do and you do it well and you care about people and, and all of the kind of integrity that I think the organization stands for, um, it's certainly, uh, I guess, you know, when it gets down to it, sadly enough, though, I, the bottom line, you know, it's kind of where the tire meets the road, and that is, you know, tell us a little bit about the growth and maybe some of the profits that you've had uh, and I'm guessing by the just knowing you from a reputation year after year, even despite the recession. Uh, yes, we have been blessed enough that we've had growth every year. We've been profitable every year. And uh, we are really – it's a pretty large pie that we're going after. So the market's large, and it's a little bit easier for a company like ours to grab market share away from a larger provider because of the customer service that we can provide mm. and the, the, the technical talent that we can provide and really just the ease of doing business with us. So – so we're much easier to work with than some of the, the mega providers. And uh, so that's really, uh, you know, that along with our, our customer service and, and our reputation of making sure that all of our work is of the highest quality, that's really has been uh, the reason that we've been able to be uh, profitable and to grow every year despite the recession. Virtualization, storage, networking, wireless, uh um, hate to pin you down, but I'd love to, you know, you're out there again where the tire meets the road and on the front lines. Uh, share with uh, some of our listeners uh, maybe some of the trends that you're seeing out there. Sure, Frank. Um, the, we are definitely seeing a lot of uh, trends and, and really the convergence of server, storage, and network to really kind of one virtual technology stack. And, uh, you know, people are, are, I guess, less concerned about, you know, who the manufacturer is and, and uh, you know, what what's in that stack. And they're, they're going to be more interested in, in really kind of what – you know how much efficient uh, work they can get from that technology stack. So, hmm. so we're seeing a lot of that. We're we're definitely seeing uh, Moore's law continue. The price of hardware will continue to fall as we make uh, faster, uh, less expensive uh, chips for sure. And uh, one of the the biggest trends we're seeing is is uh, is, is in the cloud and in in managed services. You know more companies uh, are wanting another company to to manage their infrastructure for them and really kind of focus on uh, the, an ironclad service level and making sure that the systems are up and running so they can focus on really putting together applications that can either uh, drive revenue or run the business. Um, <clears throat> we also see that uh, security is still high on everyone's list because we know that nobody really wants to make the headlines because of a cyber attack. Really? And, uh, you know, being a, a locally owned Georgia company, we definitely are seeing that the Georgia companies prefer to work with uh, local companies and working with you know big national providers. So those are some of the trends that we're seeing. Well, that's really good to hear. I I, I do think I, I'm guessing you know when you when we talk about the cloud, you know it's uh, it's almost too good to be true. And being able to uh, focus on your core and to be able to in a sense delegate to uh, a vendor those kind of controls and those kind of services, I would think you'd want somebody that was in the neighborhood. You know, at least somebody that you could have lunch with and occasionally be able to see face to face at a networking meeting. So. Um, maybe you, you mentioned the cloud. Go into a little bit more about what's your opinion of it. Do you, you know, obviously the efficiencies are there, but uh, um, things like security, maintenance, uh, all of the other issues that are kind of centered around it. Uh, um, it's certainly not a. I wouldn't call it a trend anymore. I'm pretty sure that it's heading into uh, uh, standard operating procedure almost. It is, and and you know the, the terminology means um, many things to many people. There's terms like software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, or data storage as a service. Um, you know, and none of these necessarily have to be built on each other. You know, and I think a more official definition of is it, of the cloud is you know the ability to provision you know virtual servers, memory, or storage on the fly 
from an internet portal. So, so that's just some of the things that we're hearing. But, but the, uh, you know, the, the other stuff has been around for a while, and I really think it's a, it's a huge opportunity for a lot of providers like Abacus. And um, you know, we we can we do that here. We provide um, the platform as a service and the infrastructure as a service, and data storage as a service. And, uh, and we will also be providing virtual desktop as a service. So, so as far as the cloud goes, you're right. It, it, is, it is starting to be much more mainstream. Um, we're going to see companies that are going to want to put part of their business out on the cloud, uh, maybe their bail. Uh, we're going to see companies that will want to retain certain critical things internally because uh, they believe that the security of the cloud is not the same as if they would do it themselves, which is sometimes uh, not the case. Um, so, but we're going to see a lot of hybrid uh, versions out there, and that's really where I think the trend is going to go. I mean, everyone will just put a little little piece here, and they'll just kind of add to it as they get more comfortable with it. But it really provides a nice opportunity uh, for companies to to not have to put together, you know, a huge capital expense, you know, if they are starting a business. One one CIO uh, I had lunch with the other day, and he said, if I was starting a business today, a small business, I would never buy hardware. I would just put everything out in the cloud so I could focus on my, my database, my application. So so I definitely think well, that I'm guessing that's got to be a huge part of it because with all the, you know, we jokingly talk about rapid change. I don't even think anyone cares about change anymore. We know and accept the fact that nothing is going to stay the same very long. How do you make a commitment to anything? And doesn't the cloud really kind of give you some leverage in, in regard to being able to get best of breed without necessarily having to invest in it? It, it definitely does, and so, so like you said before, we're going to see more and more people moving uh, more of their applications and databases mm -hmm. to the cloud. But I still think it's going to be a, a slow moving trend, and people aren't just going to switch from one to the other overnight. We've got millions of square feet of data center space built that's owned by individual corporations. They're, they're not just going to want to turn that over overnight. So just it'll it'll be bit by bit. Um, and then over time, I think the trend will, will slow down a little bit. Well, and I'm gathering, too, that that's where an abacus comes in and that uh, you can, in a way, walk them through the changes and be able to adapt on either situation and be ready if they're wanting to move forward or be able to stabilize and get the most efficiencies out of what they're doing currently. Um, tell us a, bit, a little bit about who's your uh, perfect client. You know, what is it, small to medium size, and maybe what kind of businesses? Uh, share with some of our listeners who it is that you feel like you can really bring the the best type of talent to the table. Well, I mean, we, we're dealing in, in just about every industry you can imagine, from uh, you know higher education, K through 12, you know, local government, federal mm -hmm. government, state government, uh, hospitals, uh, just general commercial uh, Fortune 500. Companies, so we're really all over the board. You know, a large Fortune 500 company might use us for a few niche things, or they still might, you know, do business with Accenture or IBM. You know, or a medium-sized company would want us to do, you know, everything uh, soup to nuts for them, and 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 know that that we would uh, give them much better service because their business would be very important to us. So, so we're we're really all over the board. If you've got the need for computing, um, and you've got servers, and you've got desktops and you need to store your data, retrieve your data, back it up, it needs to be secure. I mean, we're a company that can do that, and if you would like, we can do it all for you in our data centers and, and charge you as a service. So there's a, there's many many types of clients that, that can do business with us, and this is really all over the board. Well, these are my terms, but in earlier you were describing the workplace that you try to create, and I think obviously you were describing a lot of fellowship, a lot of quality of life in terms of uh, the kind of place you want to work with and the kind of people you want to work with. Um, I would be remiss in not bringing up the fact you're a TAG Premier member. Um, can you relate some of that to some of the fellowship and, and some of the contacts that you've made, not only as a member of TAG, but stepping up a level and becoming a Premier member? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, being a, a, a premier member has been great. Uh, uh, TAG does, does a great job of, of really uh, bringing the, the local IT community together, and, and you really feel like you're a part of something. Um, you know, uh, one, one of the CIOs mentioned that, you know, Atlanta is a very, and Georgia is a very unique uh, place because most, most states or cities don't have an organization like TAG, so we're real lucky to have that here. And being a premier member you really feel like you're you're really kind of woven into the the technology business uh, community and culture here in Georgia. So it's just been great for us, and it's really allowed us to meet some some really good people uh, because TAG will put on events that are just specifically for premier members. So it's great for networking, it's great for getting your name out there, it's great for learning about other companies. 
So and, and the other thing that's really good about being a premier member is that all of our employees can get involved, and we don't have a finite number of employees that can get involved with TAG. So, so we promote here internally heavily that everyone can get involved, whether it's a society or an event or something that, that's really backed by, by TAG. Well, Patrick, uh, is, uh, it's one of those things when we talk about integrity, respect, excellence, accountability, the, the list goes on and on. And I think all of those terms relate back to the name Abacus as far as the IT community is concerned here. But I think obviously with a lot of the customers and the relationships that you guys have built over the last decade. Um, thank you so much for taking a moment out of your busy schedule to join us today on Tech Talk. All right. Thanks. It's been a pleasure.